Hi garden friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Ara and this is Gardening on Purpose. I garden in Georgia, Zone 8A. For today's video, I'll be giving you an October garden tour. Here we are in the third week in October. We haven't had rain all October. The last time we got rain, it was um, a combination from the tropical storm watch that we were on when the Hurricane Helene was battering Florida. Other than that, we have not gotten a drop of rain since then. And yeah, again, third week in October, things are looking rough. Things are still trying to push out blooms, but let's just see what the garden looks like. I'm going to start in the hosta garden and as you know the hosta is in the shade so I'm hoping it's coming through on the camera and as per usual you know hostas are looking rough at this time of the year they are battered they are brown some are laying down but others are actually still standing up and for me I do not cut my hostas back I let the frost hit them and then once the frost hit them then it'll be easier for me to just pull the tattered leaves off of the hosta and you know they did really really well you know this is a very new bed this is only a couple months old hopefully next year they come back bigger and better but you know everybody's hosta garden usually looks like this around this time of year In front of the hosta garden is another shade to part shade area here. We have a bunch of Lenten Rose. I have some Lyrope. I have some Hookeras or Corobels. And I have some Carex by the Southern Living Plant Collection. And I also have my Purple Heart. This bed really gives me trouble because at first I started out with it being an annual bed, then I turned into perennial, and then I just can't make up my mind with certain things. But I think in the end, it's just going to be a perennial bed for the shade. You might have seen an extension to this bed here. This one here, I moved a lot of stuff around, and I put a bunch of daylilies here, which I might end up and move again. But... Um, my mulch has been moved around a little bit because I've just been moving stuff. You know, this is the perfect time to be moving things and I am taking advantage of that. And with that, I'm messing up my really nice mulch, but that's okay. Waiting for my leaves to fall because my feet, my when my leaves fall, they will actually be a base for the decorative mulch. This is also another extension here. This one here, I, I don't know if you remember, but I had bought these, um, these guys here, these are the Southern Living Plant Collection. And these here, the Obsession Nandina, right there. One, two, three, four, five. They were actually in the front. And I wrote, I noticed that they weren't doing well. And I moved them. And they seemed to be doing better here. I also moved around some irises that I had. And you might have seen a video where I actually planted some new iris rhizomes from Lowe's not too long ago. And guess what, guys? Some of them are already pushing out growth. Whether or not they are actually going to bloom this year, it's not a big deal for me. I was just so enthralled in the beauty. I can wait a year or so for these guys to bloom. Further back here are some agapanthas that I got on clearance. And I ran out of um, soil conditioner. I use... Um, pine bark soil conditioner. I do not put garden soil or I do not put potting soil in my clay. My clay already retains water. For me to add other things, um, you know, potting soil or potting mix in there, it's just going to add, you know, it's just going to actually create a, a chance to retain more water. So what I do is for every single hole I, I dig in this yard, I add pine bark soil conditioner which is a ground up pine bark and it really really helps with the drainage i actually ran out of it <laughs> and i don't want to plant these agapanthus directly in my clay because that's just going to be a disaster so i'm just hoping that lowe's will have some soon so i can plant these agapanthus these were the queen mum and the ever twilight agapanthus from lowe's that i got on clearance my chinese snowball viburnum is doing great and it's butter up to bloom again whether or not it's going to actually get to bloom i don't know because we are in the third week of october last year we got a freeze on the first of november so a freeze is coming soon these bloom really really nice in the spring and they're butted up for a fall bloom but i don't know if they're going to make it i also worked on a hedge with some privets here and 
and those are looking great i just need to make sure i stay watering these things because i can get i should have actually had this hedge a long time ago but i got caught up in all kinds of stuff and the hedge kind of laxed also if you remember i thought i had some really good space back here after i you know i was so excited with the ditch garden but it turned out that this back here over here is just stone clay man like so much clay when i dig a hole my hand hurts so i'm just gonna stop doing that and just create the hedge and then forget about back here i'll keep it clean and everything but i won't plant anything here now because of all that moving and shoving that i did the cardboard under my clay is beginning to show so that's why i'm kind of excited for the leaves to fall so they can fall and cover the cardboard then i will go back and buy more mulch did a lot of moving around here i trimmed my sunshine ligustrums i added a rose creek abelia right there and i also put uh, moved two of the um let me just go close, closer so you can see i actually moved two orange rocket barberries from where they were because they just seemed stagnant and they weren't doing well and i moved them and I, once i moved them this one took really really well to the move this one here doesn't seem to be happy yet so i'm just waiting for them to um this particular one here to kind of catch his bearing my pancake arborvitaes that i planted earlier in the year they're doing absolutely amazing everybody else here is going to stay in this bed but again the bed just needs to be um mulched again i also moved some of these junipers here you guys know i'm really a big fan of juniper these days and i've had this guy here for a while the blue star juniper but it was in a bad spot and you know i just had to move it so hopefully this year it will put on some growth all right guys so these are the two main beds in the front of the yard not the front of the yard but the, the, the middle of the backyard and i made the mistake and cut the roses back a little bit and they you know we've been having really really great weather guys i mean we've been up to 75 77 79 81 and then the lows are in the 50s at night and that creates an opportunity for roses to create more blooms and there they are this is the um double knockout ruby red and look at all this great new foliage now i don't again just like the snowball viburnum i don't know if they're going to make it to bloom because I'm expecting a really big shift soon in this temperature. We've been really scathing on these great temperatures, guys. And I think that sooner or later, we're gonna, our bubbles are going to get burst and we're going to get hit really hard. And um, I don't know if they're going to make it. But this is all new foliage and all my knockout roses. Um, I moved around some daisies. That one looks, let me get out the way here. I moved some daisies and that's why that looks rough. Um, my... Autumn Joy Sedum is done blooming and they're drying up and it looks amazing for um, winter interest. More roses and even daisies are trying their best. They're really trying their best to come back out, guys. Look, I, mean, I have three, three new great blooms right here on a daisy. The Gora is showing off, guys. Absolutely showing off. Now, I remember... I had Gora as my second favorite perennial to my um, Autumn Joy, and it gave me problems over the last couple of years. I don't know. It just looked like it was dying. It died. I had to take it up and everything, but it came back, guys, and it just looks amazing. Here we are in the third week in October, and this thing is in full bloom. So if you're looking for something that's going to take you all the, I mean, seriously, all the way to your very first frost, it will be the beautiful pink Beliza Gora really nice i've got some salvia in here that's trying their best to put some blooms on right there and the mystic spire salvia is just the pollinators the pollinators are actually still happy with this guy and they are loving that mystic spires In the back bed, you can actually see the cardboard even more because of all the changes. You remember I, I showed you a video when I had like 35 clearance plants. I finally put all of, most of them in, in where they're supposed to go, except for these two um, junipers here. This is two blue point junipers and junipers need to stay high and dry and they need absolute full sun. And I'm really trying to figure out where these last two are going to go. The others, one, two, three, and four, they're in where they're supposed to be. Look at this beautiful 
mom guy this is a mom an orange mom i bought three years ago i started out with i used to throw away my mom's after I'm done with them. And then somebody told me, don't throw them away. Put them in the ground. They'll come back. And they sure did. And not only do they come back, they bloom in the spring and the fall. And they bloom a long time, way longer than if they were in a container. This, look at this beauty, guys. To be honest with you, I never have to buy mums again. I have pink. I have red. I have yellow. But this, this orangey one here is an absolute um, show off. I've, I cut back a bunch of stuff. I cut back some yarrow. And even after I cut it back, because we're having so many good temperatures, it's beginning to bring back new foliage. Same thing with these um, cat's meow nepeta. Cut them back and look at that guy. I got a little mound already. Um, I left these perennials for the bird seeds, so that's fine. And then I need to cut back this um, tiger lily. It's at the point now where I can cut it down because I, I believe the bulb has gotten what it needs to get out of it. And then I have my rose, no, this is my Canyon Creek. Canyon Creek Abelia, still blooming, still providing nectar for the pollinators. The beautiful Mexican petunia is absolutely amazing, still blooming. This is another one just like the Gora that will take me, seriously, take me all the way to the end of the season, guys. I'm really, really happy with the way the garden looks. I'm also kind of excited, waiting to, to see when everything goes to sleep and I cut everything back and all the leaves are falling to see what the structure of the garden looks like. Because, you know, I took a lot of time to go buy all these evergreens so that the garden doesn't look like a grave. I, because I can actually, I can actually garden 12 months out the year. I'm in zone, zone 8 in Georgia and it never gets cold enough to keep me out of the garden. It doesn't snow, really. I mean, a little dust here and there that doesn't even mean anything. And it doesn't freeze that much to the point where I can't dig a hole. So I can garden 24-7 if I want to here in my Zone 8A garden. Let's go over to the east side of the, the, the fence. And here, these are where my Walmart roses are. This one is um, Cathedral Bells. I've got, um, I mean, Mr. Lincoln. I've got Love and Peace. I've got this beauty here that has just been impressing me so much, guys. And you guys know I'm not, I'm not a rose geek or a rose freak or a rose, um, what's the other word? A rose professional or like I'm not like a, 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 you know, this big rose person. But I do love roses. They are a pain because they have so many issues. But... I found that when I go to my Walmart every fe February, they have all these beautiful uh, roses and I buy them. They're only $9.97 and they're the Expert Gardener brand. And I've talked to you guys about this many a time and they have done really, really well for me. This particular one here is Rio Samba and this has just been showing off. Now, all of them, this is the last one that's blooming. Everybody else is kind of done, you know, and even, a lot of them have actually foliage on, but they're not giving me, still giving me blooms, is the Rio Samba. And this one here, look at that, but still coming while still opening, guys. So I'm just waiting. I'm not going to cut this back until we get a freeze, because if I cut it back, it's going to regenerate more foliage, which is definitely going to get damaged the next time it actually freezes closer to the fence guys is I put back some um, crepe myrtles that I had moved and I had no business moving these crepe myrtles because I knew that crepe myrtles here they are this is part of the Delta series crepe myrtle I have Delta Fusia, Delta Fusion, Delta Moonlight, Delta, I think it's a lavender one. I can't remember the name of it, but um, they do better here. Now, I didn't really pay attention to them last early in the season because they were somewhere else and I kept forgetting to include them in the videos. So they didn't do well at all. So I moved them and I'm hoping that next year they will bloom. I moved around some roses. These are all Walmart roses right here. Let me get out the way. More Walmart roses here. Here's another one here. And here's another one here. Again, made the mistake of cutting it back and it regenerated really, really quickly. You probably saw a video of me planting some um, daffodils back here. And um, again, just waiting for foliage to fall so it can actually cushion them down. And this should be a really nice yellow, white, yellow and white uh, thing to look at 
when they actually bloom. Hopefully they bloom. I make sure I put a lot of soil conditioner in there because there's a lot of heavy clay back here. But I did my best to do 50-50. And sometimes actually more than 50-50 because of the, the, t the thickness of the clay. Back here I have some lower pedalum and some beautiful, I'm really a big fan of Dwarf Buford Holly. This thing is so you know glossy leaves really nice takes full sun and I don't have to water it as much and it's not it's only been in here for a year and a half and it doesn't need me to water it all that much back here is the ditch garden you know but I am kind of just gonna keep this clean and not invest too much time into it anymore it really really takes a lot out of me to get this ditch garden going and it's so hard with with that clay it's ho so hard back there so um okay guys so this is pretty much the yard you know like i said the, the, what you're seeing there is cardboard because i moved from mulch and i moved some some stuff here that actually required me to put more cardboard down this is the rose area here these are the two main beds in the front and then let me show you that little patio area. Oh, one thing I want to show you. Here are some um, daylilies that are still blooming. Here I have a nightlight camia cypress in the middle, which will be an evergreen conifer. And around that, I have some Dutch irises. I think it's blue magic that they're going to sleep now. They've gone to sleep. But saying that, as soon as I said that, I saw this. Not sure why they're even poking up. They should not be poking up at all, but I don't know what's going on. Here and surrounded by that is some daylilies, reblooming daylilies. When I bought these, I was under the impression I was buying Stella de Oro, but Stella de Oro is a light yellow. These are coming out kind of browny and yellow, so I don't know if all that whole package I bought was mislabeled or whatever it was. So I'm just going to be calling it daylilies here, and they are still churning out blooms, guys. Now, I know a lot of folks don't like daylilies. They say daylilies are too messy and daylilies don't look this and don't, don't look that. But get you some reblooming daylilies and trim them down after that first flush, trim them and they'll come back. And then that final trim before you get your frost, take it all the way down to six inches and then it won't look as messy as I hear people say. But you know, not everybody likes daylilies and that's understandable, but I sure do love them because they are beautiful. They come in all kinds of colors. I think the only color that daylilies are not is a pure white and a blue, but I'm pretty sure they, they have all the colors too. You guys remember I'm still working on that little area when I first come out my patio, my covered patio, and I've spray painted a bunch of pots. I've put a bunch of um, shade perennials that actually are zones five to nine, so they will stay outside. Um, but I'm still working on adding even more rocks to the area. All this here are free rocks from somewhere in my yard. It's from me digging holes, it's from me grabbing rocks and just putting them down. The only spot I have left to put is where you see that black um, fabric. That is the only spot left to cover. Then once I have the base of the free rocks from my yard, then I'll come in with the decorative rock that I got from... I believe I got it from Home Depot. I'm not sure. It's not a big deal if I didn't. It's either Home Depot or Lowe's. That's where I shop mostly for most of my stuff. And a lot more stuff here that I'm still working on. My Japanese maples that I got as a gift. Those are doing great. Can't wait for them to turn and give me that beautiful fall color. This guy here. I don't talk about my Japanese maples that much. And I think that sometimes I actually forget. This one is the Katsura. Ace Palmatum Katsura. And I have another one over there that is in Oregon Sunset, and they look great. But I can't wait to finish this area. Let me back up so you can see. I can't wait to finish this area so that you can see what the goal was in my head. Um, but there's just so much still to do. It's really been an amazing season. I got so much done. I got so many great deals, clearance plants and everything. And I really do appreciate you guys. All your comments, all your likes, all your shares, all your suggestions. You guys found a yellow aster disease on my plant. And I listened and I replaced it. Um, and I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Let me know how your garden is doing in October. Have you been getting rain? We haven't gotten rain since, you know, since Helene. And yes. 
you know, the sun is not that hot. Plants don't require that much water, but you still have to water, guys. Especially for me here in Georgia in 8A, where we're blazing sun. I'm doing this video, and it is hot as you know what, because they're giving us 79 they're giving us 80 they're giving us 81 and it's just been really really amazing please like please share please subscribe and remember to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted on my new videos i will see you on the next one have a great day bye bye